It's a partly cloudy, cool day in the Bay Area, and today in Berkeley, it's the final match of the regular season as number seven Stanford visits California. I'm Joe Castellano. Welcome inside Edwards Stadium. Stanford a chance to clinch at least a share of the Pac-12 title with a win today, and the Cardinal come in red hot, winners of nine straight matches, and the last five have been shutouts. The back line deserves a lot of credit for that, but the final line of defense is goalkeeper Ryan Campbell, the junior, who has been spectacular. Eight shutouts, first in the Pac-12, plenty of recent accolades, just named the National Player of the Week in addition to being the Pac-12 Goalkeeper of the Week. A lot of athleticism and quickness that you need to be one of the top goalkeepers in the country. For Cal, they are preparing for postseason, and all opponents have to be concerned with slowing down sophomore Carly Lima, one of the fastest players in the nation. She has four goals and can score in different ways, either with her speed, when she gets some space, look out, and she can also be dangerous in tight quarters. She has really a knack for scoring when she is in the right place at the right time. Coming up, Stanford looking for a Pac-12 title today, facing a Cal team that is unbeaten in its last four matches. Cardinal and Bears, the rivalry continues next on Pac-12 Network. Pac-12 Women's Soccer is brought to you by Clean Simple Eats, elevating life through food and fitness. And by Sprouts Farmers Market, the official grocer of the Pac-12. The dominating Cardinal team, 16-2 and 1, 9-1 and 0 in the Pac-12. Nine straight wins coming in, facing a Cal team that is 10-4 and 5, 5-3 five, and 2 in the conference and there's the head coach of the Bears Neil McGuire in his 16th season as the head coach at Cal the all-time wins leader and he's led the Bears to the NCAA tournament in 12 of his previous 15 seasons getting ready to go there once again for Stanford their head coach is Paul Radcliffe his 20th season and with a win today he would have his 10th Pac-12 title at least a share of that and we'll keep tabs on the UCLA USC game Looking for the first Pac-12 title since 2019. Well, for Stanford, this game very meaningful, not only for the rivalry, but Stanford and UCLA tied atop the Pac-12 standings. And they are looking for their first Pac-12 title in the last three years, as I mentioned. And the win would clinch a share of that title. Number one UCLA trailing number 14 USC. Right now, last we checked, it was late in the first half. And UCLA and Stanford uh, matching results would end in a share of the title. So we'll see if uh, UCLA can come back or if they lose, then the win would clinch it for Stanford. Stanford's defense has been amazing, to, stay, to say the least, of late. They have five consecutive shutouts coming into this match. They have not allowed a goal since October the 9th against Washington State. And that was an own goal. So they've gone almost 500 minutes without allowing a goal. So there is the task for Cal today. And all year long, Stanford has been fantastic. You see right up there with UCLA atop the standings. And Cal's had a, an excellent season as well at 5-3-2. And, and USC trying to play the spoiler today with that 2 nothing lead, as I mentioned, on UCLA. But a long way to go in that one. So Stanford, the five consecutive shutouts. They shut out number one UCLA to start the streak back on October the 14th. That was one nothing, and then one nothing over Oregon, three nothing over Oregon State, five nothing against Utah, and then on Sunday, two nothing against Colorado. This Cal team, you see them lining up right there. They are coming off a tie, nothing nothing against Utah. That was a disappointing result for them. They really thought they should win that one, but they did win convincingly in their previous match against Colorado 4 nothing when they had a season high for goals of four. Stanford, speaking of goals, they, they are a high-scoring team as well as playing good defense. And Stanford leading the all-time series with Cal, as you see, and 
They've won seven straight here in Berkeley, although Cal had a recent win at Stanford. Anytime Cal and Stanford get together in any sport, it's going to be intense. And as I was mentioning, Stanford scoring a lot as well as having the great defense. They are 11th in the country as far as goals per game, 2.63 and second in the Pac-12. They put a lot of shots on goal. They are first in the nation in shots on goal. They're averaging 11 per game. So that puts it on the Cal defense. And Cal played excellent defense last game uh, when they played on Sunday against Utah, and they're going to need more of that. Both goalkeepers are great. We already talked about Ryan Campbell for Stanford. Angelina Anderson is also terrific as the goalkeeper for Cal. So you know that you're going to have to really set up and get a great chance to be able to score on either one of these goalkeepers. Angelina Anderson, she was the Pac-12 freshman of the year a few years ago and has just carried that along in her career uh, where she is making her 71st career start today and has only allowed 63 career goals. And Ryan Campbell, 15-2-1 this year, a 0 0.52 goals against average, 13th in the nation in goals against. She's got eight shutouts, and that is first in the Pac-12 conference. And again, she was named the national player of the week as a, uh, just an, an extra, uh, in addition to having the Pac-12 goalkeeper of the week honors. Uh, she was the fourth Stanford player to win that national player of the week honor since 2010. Lindsey Taylor did it, Courtney Verlu, and Andy Sullivan most uh, recently in 2016 was a national player of the week from Stanford. So she's been great. The whole defense has been great. And it's a Stanford team that's very young. Coach Ratcliffe says that the reason this team stands out among others that he's had is that it has youth that's dominating. So we'll see how it goes today. Stanford will get us started. They are in the red uniforms, moving from right to left. And Cal in the white unis today, going from left to right. Here we go. Cal and Stanford. Right off the bat, Bears trying to get out of their own end. Bonflasha getting a touch right there. Now for Stanford, see their lineup. They're not in the starting lineup as their leading scorer, Lumi Kosmeyer, but they have plenty of other players that can do damage, and their defense has just been great, as we mentioned. Elise Evans has been developing quickly on the back line, and seniors Kennedy Wesley and Paige Rubenstein have started every game for that superb defense for Stanford. The Cal starting lineup. Lots of seniors on this team. Four of them lead the way. Kelly Roy has the most goals with 11. Paige Metamire, or uh, Metire, I should say. Metair, beg your pardon. And Mia Fontana control the midfield. And Sydney Collins anchoring the back line there. Those are very experienced players for Cal. Bonflasha gets a touch there again for the Bears. And they work it into the scoring third. Roy takes a deep shot, and it's over the crossbar, over the outstretched reach of the goalkeeper, Campbell. So a decent chance right there for Keeley Roy, the senior from Sebastopol. It's a little too high on that shot. She is the leading scorer on this Cal team with 11 goals. One of the top scorers in the Pac-12. So the senior already getting a chance. The Bears didn't have a lot of opportunities in that nothing-nothing tie against Utah, but they did control the match. Just could not put one in the goal. They didn't have maybe enough opportunities, as many as they would like. Now Stanford controlling the ball as they push it back. Kennedy Wesley here, the senior defender. Started all 19 games this season. Now in the midfield on the near side. 
Takeaway there, but a giveaway by Cal. They work to the far side of the field now for Stanford. Here comes Keely Roy. That's a two on four. There's Lima with the speed, and Campbell comes out to grab it. But we talked about that right off the bat. Carly Lima, even if you don't have numbers on a run like that, Lima can outrun everybody with her sprinter speed and turn it into a scoring opportunity. Now she didn't get much on that shot, but that went from being maybe nothing with a two on four to possibly something. Jumping out to grab it is Anderson. And watch Carly Lima here off the feed by Roy. I mean, there's no chance, right? She just puts on a burst of speed, just accelerating like she was driving a Tesla. <laughs> if you've ever driven a Tesla, those things take off like Carly Lima. She's got four goals this year, second on the team, 10 career goals. That one comes out on the near side. And Lima's just a sophomore. She's going to be a force to be reckoned with here in the conference for a couple more years for Cal. Here come the Bears. Fontana trying to set something up there. Now Angie giving it back for Stanford. Here come the Cardinal. They work up the midfield and into the penalty area. Winning that battle for Cal was Gifford. Gets to a key. Bonflasha trying to break out. And a giveaway. Leontini had it, goes back. Into the penalty area, a little bump there. As Aiki tried to get to it. There's Aiki going after it. But stepping in the way was Courtney Boone. Who does a really good job defensively for Cal. Here's Paige Mateer. In the midfield, little open space here for Bonflasha, but that pass is into no man's land. So a throw in here for Stanford. Pagador will throw it in. Sophomore from Roseville near Sacramento. Taken away, but gathered back in by Angie. And here come the Cardinal. Ike works it back. Little back and forth action there. Now Roy has it taken away. So neither team has really been able to establish much control so far. Here's Abby Grubel. Getting a touch there, the grad student from Santa Ana. Got five goals so far this season. And the Cardinal content to work it all the way back in the, def the defensive end. Now to midfield. On the far side, it goes out. Nice crowd in the stands here. It's a beautiful day, temperature in the mid-60s. A little lower 60s now. It's cooled off a little bit, 62, partly cloudy. Great day for the final match of the regular season between these two teams. Good battles going on. Stanford getting to it. Ike and knocked out of the penalty area as Gifford steps in.
Now Bond flashes. She's got room to operate. A key. She's got some speed. Cal does not have numbers here. Into the penalty area, and Lima tried to knock it towards the goal with a little more force. But Campbell in good position. Matea in the midfield. Lima going to work in the far corner. And able to make it so that Cal will have a throw in. Here's Lima on the run after a key punched one towards her and she's trying to use the header. Didn't get as much of it as she would like. They were trying to get to Lima right there, but it's knocked away. That'll be a throw in here for Stanford. Ike handling it, the freshman from Palo Alto. Well, this Stanford team, you know, you come in to a match like this and you've won nine in a row, five straight shutouts. You're a school that's won three national championships, 2011, 17, 19. So you think about the aura that they must have. But Coach Lackcliffe was talking about how you, you have to earn that every single game. It's not like you just show up on the field and the other team says, oh, we're playing Stanford and we can't handle this. No, you've got to bring it every game if you're Stanford because the other teams are going after you. And a good example of it is today with USC and UCLA, USC leading that one. Here's a key again, or rather, uh, I key. <laughs> I key against the key. You got to love that matchup. And there's a shot that's blocked off the foot of Leontini. Another chance, and that one goes over the goal from Angie. Stanford. Tough angle right there, and Leontini couldn't get it to the goal. It'll be a corner kick here for Stanford. That's knocked out of there, off the corner by Ike. Back into the penalty area. Bonflasha gets a piece of it. And that'll be another corner kick here for Jasmine Ike. Some bumping again. And the physicality for Courtney Boone. I mentioned her defensively for Cal. And knocked out of the penalty area by the Bears. Trying to get something going again. Stanford, but not a great pass right there by Brandt. So Angelina Anderson will send it out. And they cannot get, Cal cannot get back into the offensive area. Williams sending over to the far side. Roy playing some defense here against Doms. Comes back for Doms. And they're going to work the other side of the field now. At least the midfield right now, Wesley. No, nope, they're going to stay over on the far side. Almost intercepted by Mateer. And Stanford controlling a little bit here. Wesley, a big part of the great defense they have. Good job getting position by Ike. But a key has it now for Cal. Here comes a key. Turning on the afterburners. Trying to pass for Roy, sliding. And coming out to grab it is Campbell.
I beg your pardon, I believe actually that was Mateer with the opportunity. Mateer sliding right there. But Campbell came out quickly because Carly Lima was looming. Paige Mateer had the chance there. Got one goal this season. Back to Angelina Anderson again. Kept alive by Angie. The Bears trying to get out of harm's way. Leontini working it. And again, the Bears respond. Throw in here for Pagador. Pagador getting back to Doms. And they will send it back once again. Stanford likes to start from its back line to get things going. Very organized in their attack. Doms gets a little room, deep shot, but it's way wide. Maya Doms, who has three goals this year, 20 in her career, the senior from Davis, California. Here in the 15th minute, no score. There's Maya. Had 11 goals last season and three this year. By the way, the UCLA game at USC, they're in the second half now and it's two nothing USC. Stanford trying to get a run there, knocked away. A key for Cal, poking it over to Mateer. Now Bonflasha. And over on the near side for Gifford. Here's a key again. There's that burst of speed. A key trying to set up for a pass or a shot, gets in the penalty area. And then Lima with an errant pass for Bonflasha. Angie goes the other way. Poked out by Cal. Now the Cardinal comfortable getting out of their own end. Brandt sends it all the way back to Campbell. Now the thing about this defense for Stanford, Coach Ratcliffe telling us that it's really about the partnerships that have improved throughout the season. The communication just great with Wesley, Evans, Pagador, Brandt, and Rubenstein. They've all been just terrific defensively, and that's how you get all these shutouts with 11 of them. Here come the Bears, though, trying to break that streak. Lima into the penalty area. Little pass, and Mateer's shot is knocked away. Second time that Mateer, or was that Fontana? Actually, Fontana had a chance. That's Fontana's first opportunity. It'll be a corner kick for Cal after Fontana went left foot, but didn't get much on it. Mia Fontana, the senior from Burlingame. And on the corner kick, unable to get a good one there was Mateer. Well, Cal has the better of it as far as the shots at four to three so far. Very evenly played match here in the 18th minute. Montana playing defense here. Angie 
going up against Mateer. Doms could not get to it. Bonflasha touched it. It goes out. We're going to have a corner kick for Stanford. Jasmine Aiki will take care of the corner kick. There, it's in a scrum. Anderson could not get a hold of it. That was almost a good opportunity, but it rolls out. And we'll have another corner kick for Stanford. This got dangerous right here for the Bears defensively because once it starts moving around, it's hard for the goalkeeper to know where that's going to be. And she jumped out and didn't get all of it. She tried to smother it, and that got dangerous. Ike again and hits the side of the net. So the Bears have to feel like they got away with one right there. Because when that ball was loose in front of the goal, that's always a dangerous situation. There's Anderson with the 0 0.87 goals against average. Tied for third in the Pac-12 in solo shutouts. He's had a great career, 26 career shutouts, including in the last match on Sunday. Second on Cal's all-time list, Emily Boyd had 36 in her career. Coach McGuire talking about Angelina Anderson, saying that she has such high standards for herself that she's upset when things aren't going perfectly her way, but she's had such a great career. And now a senior. Here's Doms with a little bit of room to operate. Almost lost it, gets it back. On the far side of the field, Rubenstein. Boone lets it go back to the goalkeeper. Anderson kicks it away. Leontini able to settle it. Grubel looking for Pagador into the penalty area. And nobody got a shot off there. Anderson comes out and avoids the traffic there with Williams in her face. Timing is everything for a goalkeeper and watch Angelina Anderson. She comes out just in a nick of time because Samantha Williams was praying right there. Free kick here for Stanford. Pagador on the near side. Quick touch there for Ike. Fancy footwork by Mateer. Now Gifford. Boone. Struggle to try to get that pass for Lima. And ends up going Stanford's way. Pagador throws it in. Here comes Grubel. Trying to create some space. Going up against Gifford. Grubel. Tries to center it. But nobody there to gather it in. Spinning around Leontini. And a deep one, Gifford missed on the header. Did she touch it? No, I don't think she did. So she'll be throwing it in. Here was Grubel. A little cross here by Grubel. That's just good defense by Cal. They've stepped in the way of 
Balls that could have been opportunities for Stanford. Heading into the 24th minute here. Throw in here for Rubenstein. And Cal's been there to thwart the opportunities for Stanford. I mean, we talked about the Stanford defense. How about Cal? They've only allowed one goal in the last four matches, outscoring opponents 7-1. to one. They're unbeaten in their last four. Here comes Courtney Boone on the run. A little sideways pass that did not connect with Roy. Grubel on the near side. Angie works it to the far side. And stepping in front of the pass there was Sidney Collins, the senior, redshirt senior for Cows. Done a great job defensively. Started all 18. Rather, uh, 19 games for Cal coming in, now 20. A key with it, spinning around. Oh, what a move by a key. A key for Cal. Can't you get a shot off? Yes, but it's wide. And that's good defense, not allowing her to get a good look. I mean, she has... Really good moves, good speed, but that's even better defense right there. You can see Pagador just not allowing her to get an angle. The sophomore Pagador for Stanford doing a tremendous job. There's Pagador again, but a key. Now has it in the corner, the cross, and it goes right into the hands of Campbell. But... Io Aki has had a really good first half for Cal. Look at her creating chances, getting away from Pagador right here. And that's how you can score some goals or set up goals. That kind of execution. Aki, who played on Team USA's under 20 team, playing in a much bigger role this season with Cal as a sophomore. Leads the team in assists with nine. You can see why on those kind of plays. Here's Roy and knocks it out. Be thrown in here by Rubenstein. Doms with a quick touch. Rubenstein gets it back. Angie. Does that feed too far? No. Pagador able to track it down. Grubel looking to pass and great job of positioning by Kaylee Gifford, the Richard senior from San Jose for Cal. Pepperdine transfer. Played at Pepperdine last year. Previous four seasons she was at Cal. Went to Pepperdine, came back. Graduated from Cal with an English degree in uh, 2021. Now back for grad school. Another corner kick here for Stanford. Five to one corner kicks in favor of the Cardinal. Comes out for an opening, and no, Angie couldn't get a good pass or shot off. Doms puts it back in the penalty area, and it's knocked out of there by Mateer. Stanford putting on some heat now. Back in the penalty area, back out. And a deep shot goes wide off the foot of Wesley. That didn't look like it was going to be a great opportunity, but she put a pretty good shot on there. That had some heat on it. Boone headed it out. And even though it wasn't settled, it was a pretty good opportunity for Wesley. Didn't get it on goal, but had plenty of velocity on it. Well, neither team has made a critical mistake defensively. We've seen some pretty good chances, but no critical mistakes. 
And that goes along with what both of these teams have been doing defensively lately. Now Cal on the move. This is a team as Mateer handles, and Mateer is one of the seniors. And one of the things that Coach McGuire stressed when talking to us of saying that he's never loved a team more in terms of the maturity towards preparation. And I think that comes from having a number of seniors. They have 11 of them. Here's Grubel. Grubel against Boone. And pushed aside. There's the whistle. No, they're going to let it go. The official pointed but didn't blow the whistle. And that, wow, they just let that go for Boone. Just get out of my way. Getting back to Coach McGuire, though, he said, you know, the maturity was unbelievable, and their team chemistry is amazing on this team. And he's been around, this is his 16th year as the head coach, and he loves the selflessness. And he said that was unparalleled with this team from his experience. So both of these head coaches, they're not exaggerating when they tell you the reason why they like this team in a different way from others. I already mentioned that Coach Radcliffe loves that the youth is dominating on this team more so than other teams he's had. And he's had some great teams. Of course, for Stanford, it's been a very difficult season emotionally after the passing of the goalkeeper, Katie Meyer. But Coach Ratcliffe said it brought the team together in a way they all want to do well for Katie and what an inspiration she was for the team. She was part of the 2019 National Championship team, a key player as a freshman. Made great saves in that shootout win against North Carolina in the final. And goalkeeper Campbell, especially inspired by Meyer. And that's why Coach Ratcliffe has said that this team has exceeded his expectations after that emotional part of the season, you know, coming in after the passing of one of their teammates. And he wondered how they would handle it, and they've actually handled it very well. They've gotten a lot of support from the community and from other players and other sports that have helped out emotionally. Once again, we see Ike setting it up. Oh, and it was a chance right there for Kostmeyer, who recently checked in. She does not start, but you see number 33 there, the freshman who has 10 goals to lead the team. Fifth in the Pac-12 in scoring, first among freshmen, fourth in the nation among freshmen. And watch this. The Ike feed, but Kostmeyer able to get to it to convert. So Kosmar comes off the bench. Something that she's done before. A key now working the near side, Gifford. Into the penalty area, quick touch going back. There's a shot that's blocked off the foot of Fontana, trying to get back to it. And it comes all the way back out to midfield. That's where Kostmeyer is battling with Boone. Grubel against Gifford. Giving back to Pagador, and they set it back up on the back line. Wesley surveying the situation. Kostmeyer trying to catch. Does. And it's really hard to get around Kostmeyer once she establishes position. The freshman from Southbury, Connecticut. And that's the thing about this freshman team, or uh, the Stanford team with a lot of freshmen, is that they are going to be good for years. And this is a team that could battle to win the national championship, ranked number seven in the country coming into this match. And they're only going to get better. Pagador, one of the young players, a sophomore. There's Grubel tracking it down with Gifford. Nice 
little nifty move there by Gifford to be able to get the throw in. And Grubel is one of the experienced players on this Stanford team. See her there, the grad student. She has been hot three goals in the last two games for Grubel. Had the goal on Sunday against Colorado to give her the uh, three in the last two. Kostmeyer couldn't get to that one, but Stanford almost had another opportunity at it, but it'll be Cal with it. Keeley Roy, Von Flasha, quick touch. And Sydney Collins will try to break out here. Quick touch there for Skylar Briggs. And I'll try to reverse direction here. Mateo sends back for Bon Flasha. Heading into the 35th minute here at Edwards Stadium in Berkeley. A key, some room to operate again. Little stutter step. Lima shoots at a save. What a save by Campbell. That was a lightning bolt off the foot of Lima. Watch this setup from a key. She's been everywhere today. And then just feathered it in there. Lima gets a nice shot off that was headed for the upper right corner. But Campbell, great positioning. You can see why she's one of the best goalkeepers in the country. Corner kick here for Cal. Roy will send it in. And just giving it over to a key. Roy gets it taken away. Wow, that is just excellent defense by Williams. And here comes Williams, a forward who was playing great D there. Williams going the length of the field. Williams now looking to give it off. Does to Grubel, and it's knocked away. Good defense by Cal getting back. A key wants to go the other way. And that one hit the official. It looked like it was, an, it was a pass for the official. <laughs> so... I believe we'll have a free kick here for Cal. <laughs> that official is not part of the Cal Bears last time I checked. <laughs> but she stepped in the way. Well, she really couldn't get out of the way there. That was just one of those things. Here's Bon Flasha. Nothing, nothing here in the 36th minute. Fontana tried to get to it, knocked away. The Bears, persistent. Briggs trying to get towards the goal there. Grubel, Stanford to midfield. Kostmeyer with a quick touch. Good battle there by a key Ike. Montana sends to the near side of the field for Gifford. Here come the Bears. Gifford against Grubel. Roy, nice pass to Aki. And the cross shot. Oh, and it's over the goal. Mateo, another opportunity. Paige Mateo's had a couple of really nice chances. Look at this setup here. Roy and Aki. And when the key gets some room, she can really set you up. That was a great pass, but Mateo, maybe in a rush there, knowing that you don't have a lot of time, she wasn't able to settle it to get the accuracy on that shot. <laughs> Coach McGuire's talked about Mateo having a really good connection with Roy and Bon Flasha. But that was a really good connection there with Aki. Aki has been all over. Having a great game for Cal. There's a steal by Aki. Aki. Paulson. 
And she draws a corner kick. Catherine Paulson, who came in off the bench. Watch Ike here. Nice pass to Paulson. Mateer able to slide to knock that one away. By the way, we have the uh, Paulson twins. We saw Catherine there. There's also Sarah Paulson, her twin, here on this Stanford team. Jasmine Ike again on the corner kick. It's loose. A shot that's blocked. That shot by Pagador. And it'll be Fontana taking it out of there and knocked out, so it'll be a throw in for Cal. Sooner or later on some of these corner kicks, you're going to get a loose ball here. And Pagador tried to knock it through traffic. Pretty good battle over there on the far side. Now it comes out to Courtney Boone. Boone, room to roam. Tries to split the defense, and that's a takeaway. Leontini, Kosmeyer, looking for Paulson. Gifford is there. Gifford's had a good defensive game so far in this first half. Keely Roy showing off some quick moves. Now the Bears will work the far side of the field. On Flasha, quick touch there. Drilled out of there by Wesley. Approaching five minutes to go in the first half of a scoreless match. Stanford can get through this first half without giving up a goal. Their streak would continue. They came in with almost 500 minutes without allowing a goal. Last one was October the 9th against Washington State, and that was an own goal. Here comes Paulson. She's got some room. Cal getting back. Paulson now one on two. Spin around there for Doms. Here's the cross. Oh, and it almost came over to Paulson, who was lurking on the left side. It was Doms was trying to get in for a header. He never did get to it. And Paulson almost had the chance on the left side. Several players had a chance at that one. See USC leading UCLA 2-0 in the 80th minute. So it's looking grim for the Bruins against their rival, the Trojans. And that would mean that if UCLA loses and Stanford wins, Stanford would win the Pac-12 title outright. Even if uh, Stanford gets a tie, they would win if UCLA loses. Dom's now with it for Stanford. And I'm sure they'll know the situation at halftime. They'll know what happened in that match and know if they need just a tie, although that's not going to make them lay back. One of the top scoring teams around, I mentioned. Second in the Pac-12, 11th in the nation in goals per game for Stanford. But Cal's done a good job defensively so far. Three minutes to go in this first half. Keely Roy works over to Bon Flasha. Stolen away. Ike. It's all the way on the far side of the field. It's Bon Flasha. Fontana. Briggs got a touch there. Now Mateo. Roy 
Trying to find Gifford, but taken away by Paulson. Stanford content to control it here on the defensive line. Now they'll try to make a little bit of a move with under two minutes to go in the first half. Pagador looking for Kostmeyer there, but that passed way too far ahead of her. Lima in midfield. Roy looking for Fontana. Montana right at the line. Did it go out? Calling for it to be out was Rubenstein, but she's not the official. <laughs> it does stay in. It's still alive. Rubenstein. Ike. Paulson trying to get to it, but Gifford will. And it'll be a throw in here for Cal. And approaching just one minute to go in the first half. Who's going to have a final rush here in this first half? One minute, one minute remaining. That one ping pongs around. Ike makes a move, shoots, and it's deflected and does not get on goal. But that's going to be a corner kick. So Stanford will have one more chance here. Look at the aggressiveness by Ike to get to that, get it away from Roy. Step aside, get it away from Mateer. But Mateer, it's the little things in a match like this that make the difference. And Mateer got a piece of that. Got good position. On the corner kick. Anderson knocks it out on the rebound. Wait a minute, we got a whistle. We've got a whistle. That is not a goal. Kostmeyer thought she had a goal. But it was call going against Stanford here. Might have been a push. There was the ball going in the goal. I'm not sure if there was a push, but there was a whistle against Stanford there. So no goal. And that'll do it for the first half. Stanford almost had a goal there at the end of the first half. Instead, we go into halftime scoreless. The corner kick. But there was a bump there, I believe. We'll be right back. Pac-12 Women's Soccer is brought to you by Clean Simple Eats, elevating life through food and fitness. And by Sprouts Farmers Market, the official grocer of the Pac-12. Joe Castellano with you. We are almost ready to start the second half of a scoreless tie here in Berkeley. Meanwhile, the final score down in Los Angeles, the rivalry USC-UCLA, well, the Trojans take care of the Bruins. 2-0. Number one UCLA goes down. They drop to 9-2-0 now in the Pac-12. And what does that mean for Stanford? Well, if they win or tie, they win the Pac-12 championship outright, which would be the 10th Pac-12 title under Coach Paul Ratcliffe in his 20 seasons, the first since 2019. It was Zoe Burns and Kalen Martin Two defensive players, two defenders that scored there for USC as they took care of the Bruins. So the standings in the Pac-12 after that game. Well, entering today, Stanford number seven in the country. UCLA number one. And uh, this is up to the minute, minute right now. USC, the number 14 team in the country. Cal, one of the best teams in the Pac-12 as well. Cal, let's not forget, they're going to get a chance at postseason play and the NCAA tournament. That will be the 13th time in the 16 years that Neil McGuire has been the head coach. Those are the points, by the way, in the Pac-12 standings. So Stanford, UCLA, they're tied as far as the points, but all you need is a tie for Stanford. You get one more point, and you win the Pac-12. A little chilly here in the East Bay. Temperature in the low 60s. 
And this was a pretty even match there in the first half. We'll see how it goes in the second half as Stanford will go from left to right. They're in the red uniforms and Cal going from right to left in the white uniforms. And the Bears will get us started. Underway here in the second half. Briggs getting a touch. Mateo now Bonflasha. Lima trying to use that speed but went out with it. Coach Ratcliffe for Stanford even talked about defending Lima and the speed that exists and that you can't step in too early on her because she'll blow by you and you'll leave her too much space. Here's a key, but I'm being told actually it's Eka, Eka. <laughs> we'll get that right at some point, Eka. So Eka, I wanna make sure we pronounce, pronounce her name correctly. She had a great first half. A sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia. She had a chance to score in that game Sunday against Utah on a penalty kick that was saved. They ended up with a nothing-nothing tie in that one. And again, Stanford has the shutout streak going. Five consecutive games with a shutout. Here comes Fontana, though. Trying to split two defenders, but it's taken away. Good defense again by Stanford. That was Brandt who stepped in the way of that one. Paulson getting the start here in the second half. She did not start the match, but Catherine Paulson had a touch there for Stanford. So Coach Ratcliffe going a little different there in his second half lineup. There's a Ke. Doms knocks it back. And Brandt sends back to the goalkeeper, Campbell. Campbell made one terrific save in the first half. Comes out to the near side to Rubenstein. And here comes Stanford with Doms. Angie. All the way to the far side of the field for Paulson. Makes the move on Gifford. Paulson sets up into the penalty area. Pass for Angie. Oh, and it's knocked away. Great defense by Briggs. Skyler Briggs stepping in. The junior from Torrance, from Southern California, after this really nice passing here. And Angie was going to get an opportunity after Ike tried to set her up. Here comes Roy the other way. Does not have numbers, but has speed. And that's knocked away. Ake giving to Lima. Bonflasha. Dom's trying to track her down, try to bump her off the ball. And that one will roll out. Be a throw in here for Cal. Well, much like USC earlier today, Cal, you know, they're trying to play well to go into the postseason, but they want to play the spoiler role here. And if they can win this, they'll take away that outright title. Stanford has clinched a share 
of the Pac-12 title, no matter what they do, even if they lose. But, you know, Cal has a chance there. Here's Aka into the penalty area. Nobody there. That ball was just bouncing. It was tantalizing if you're a Cal fan to think that somebody might be there to put it home. Boone working it back for Anderson. Got to be careful there. Ike is running all over there. And finally gets rewarded and loses it. Here comes Bonflasha. A midfielder for Cal. Racing up the sideline. Aka has it now. Mateer surveys the situation. Here comes Mateer down the middle. Stops. Maybe get a deep shot here. Bonflasha. Nothing there. Bonflasha is still working it. Aka has room. The cross. And it goes all the way across past Roy. And they bump. Oh, man, you talk about physicality, and Roy can't get a good shot off, but she won the battle with Paige Rubenstein, but eventually just didn't get a good shot. I mean, watch Rubenstein and Roy going at it here, tangling. Wow, no whistle. That's clean play, at least according to the official, and just not a great shot. Mateo sends ahead, finding Lima. Good catch of it. Trying to settle it, trying to split two defenders, and it's taken away. Once again, good defense by Stanford. Doms was able to do that job. So Cal pretty enthusiastic here so far in the first six and a half minutes of the second half. They have controlled play. And the offensive third. <laughs> Coach McGuire is talking about how recently they watched about a minute and a half clip of a video to see all the things that they've been working on and how it all came together. So, you know, he edited a minute and a half just to give his team confidence. Because sometimes you can get a little down. You had that tie against Utah that maybe you didn't expect. You thought you'd win. And they came out firing here in the second half. But now Stanford, and that one knocked over the goal by Williams. Cal has to be pleased with its defense against this Stanford team. Again, I mean, they're the number seven team in the country, and they're the ones who have a chance to win the Pac-12 outright with a tie or a win, but Cal has stayed right with them. And it's a Stanford team that's won seven in a row when they have visited Cal. So that's motivation right there for the Bears that, hey, you're coming into our place and winning seven times in a row? We can't have that. Can't have eight in a row. Here's Rubenstein for Stanford. Long feed. Bounced around. And diving out to grab it is Anderson, thwarting the opportunity possibly for Ike. Ike was trying to settle it down there. Had two defenders around her, and then saving the day was Anderson. Good timing to pounce on that one. Certainly an active game for Jasmine Ike. Here comes Cal. Opening here for Fontana. Gets denied, and there goes that opportunity. Here comes Williams the other way. Samantha Williams on the run and tripped up by Mateo. No whistle. Yes. It was delayed. I think the official had trouble getting the whistle in her mouth fast enough, but finally puts out the yellow card. I mean, this was clearly a foul. Mateer fouling Williams hard right there. So the yellow card issued. Now free kick here for Stanford. 
Leontini will handle this. Julia Leontini, the junior. Everybody stacked up on the far side of the field. They make a run towards the goal. Knocked out of there by the Bears. And here comes Keeley Roy. And sends it all the way down. Cardinal worked the far side of the field. Ike, the cross, knocked out of there again. Be a throw in here for the Cardinal. Pagador to throw it in. Leontini playing catch with Pagador. Knocked out by the Bears. No, it's off Stanford. To be a throw in for Cal. Now it'll be a throw in for Stanford. And they go back and forth here a little bit. Neither team controlling. More ping pong action. Doms finally breaks away a little bit. And big time breakaway. Rubenstein can't handle it. Anderson will kick it away. a break for Ike, but stepping in front of her was Boone, and no chance there. Boone has really played excellent defense lately. Here comes Fontana on the run. Fontana with Dom chasing her. Fontana trying to get a shot off, knocked away. It goes to Lima, and no, she shoots way over the goal. Fontana trying to get away from Dom's there. She was attached to her. And then Lima just couldn't get an accurate shot off. But who says you don't use your arms much in soccer? You, you think about that play there. Dom's going at it getting tangled up on that play with Fontana. A lot of upper body strength really coming into play. Mateer gets to Bonflasha, and now they work it back. Keely Roy, she's the leading scorer on this Cal team with 11 goals. Bonflasha couldn't get to it. And Keely Roy They've given her more freedom to be creative and take risks. And she has done a great job of recognizing when to be creative and when to be pragmatic, according to Coach McGuire. The senior from Sebastopol, leading this team in shots with 61 coming in. There's a scrum on the far side. Back and forth we go again. Okay. And little feed. It's bounced back out to Bonflasha with Gifford. Bonflasha looking across it. But there are two defenders on her, Paulson, and then blasted away by Wesley. It does seem like most of the time you've got two Stanford defenders around you every time you touch the ball because they are locked in defensively. And Boone got knocked off, or rather, that was a cat who had the ball knocked away. Here's Mateer. Now Gifford. 
Boone accelerating. Matei are surveying. And that goes all the way out on the near side, trying to hit Briggs. Rubenstein will throw in for Stanford. As we are in the 60th minute. And Cal has seen nothing but zeros on the scoreboard. Their last two matches, the one against Utah on Sunday and then today so far. Stanford, they're used to seeing zeros on the board for the other team, but not for themselves. Williams making a move on Briggs. Williams into the penalty area. Williams. The pass. It's in the goal. Stanford scores. Great play by Williams. What a move by Williams. And I believe that was Grubel who gets credit, credited for the goal. Williams just turned on the afterburners here, went by Briggs. It's a great move. And then when you get into the scrum there, and I, I actually believe that's Paulson. So we'll give the goal to Paulson right now. Find out officially, but I believe that was Catherine Paulson. In the 60th minute, number 25, Samantha. Well, Samantha Williams. they're announcing it as a Samantha Williams goal, but I believe Paulson got a piece of that. That's a tough one to tell. But right now, officially in the 60th minute, they're giving that to Samantha Williams, her seventh goal of the season. We'll see if that gets changed. Anissa Gray. Anissa Gray comes in for Cal now after that goal. So finally in the 60th minute, we get our first goal. And you know, Williams does deserve to have a goal there after the way she made that play. Coach Ratcliffe has commented about how steady she is and great dribbling one-on-one, -on -one, and that was an example. Great dribble and just Put it into another gear to get to the goal. And then possibly <laughs> helped out there, I thought, by Paulson, who was flying to the ground, but does not get credit for the goal. Here's another chance for Stanford after we take a look at this, but. Now, see, it was debatable there whether or not Paulson touched that or if it went off the Cal player. But we will say Samantha Williams. That's what they say officially. So seventh goal of the year. So now the pressure is on Cal to try to get back down one nothing. Stanford's only losses this year, September the 8th at Northwestern and September the 23rd at USC, and that's it. 16-2-1 coming in. 9-1-0 in the Pac-12. The first round of the NCAA tournament starts next Sunday. Stanford substitution, number 33, Louis Kostmeyer, replaces Samantha Williams. Kostmeyer back in for Stanford. And there she is, setting up shop, surrounded by three bears. They know she's the leading scorer on Stanford. 
It's hard to push her around. She Once she establishes position, good luck. Coming out to grab it is Anderson as Grubel was lurking. Stanford has another chance here, though. Grubel tried to get it into the middle, knocked away. Now Roy for Cal. Cal will have a throw in here. Gifford gets it to a cat. Back to Gifford. Lima, double team there. Comes out to Mateer. Makes a move, low shot, knocked away, but it went off of Brandt. This will be a corner kick here for Cal. And it'll be a Ke on the corner kick. Stanford has the advantage on those. Goes with a short pass. And jumping out to grab it is Campbell. <laughs> Rubenstein, long feed. Kostmeyer trying to track it down. Here's Gifford. Von Flasha couldn't get to it. Dom's stealing it. Angie has it. Sending back for Rubenstein. Back for Angie, the senior. Pair of seniors right there. Leontini trying to get it back. Here's Leontini again. Angie gets double teamed. Cal, a little desperate here to try to get the ball back. Stanford patient. Rubenstein trying to find Kostmeyer from her knees. Actually does get it off to Grubel. And the cross thumbs and can't get an accurate shot off. Another one of those where it's not settled. You're just trying to do your best to get something towards the goal. See Grubel here. Trying to set up Doms. It's never got a good piece of it. Rubenstein with it. He's got some room down the middle. Rubenstein, the defender gets knocked down. No whistle. Could have been a penalty kick if they had called something there. It's been a physical game, and the officials have let most of it go. Knocked away initially, and now comes out to midfield. I mentioned Anissa Gray earlier, she had a touch there. And now a collision on the right side, and a cat is shaken up. She collided with Wesley, and they both went down hard. Right there you see Wesley came out to knock it away. A cat was going at full speed and got hit on the leg somewhere. And definitely got the worst of that collision. I think a cat is gonna check out.
That is a big loss for Cal. She is playing great today. Checking in for her. Well, we've already seen Anissa Gray. I think she went out and then back in here. So there's Anissa Gray. And by the way, her twin sister, Amaya Gray, is on this Cal team. So you have two twin sisters involved. You've got a pair of twin sisters, one on Stanford, one pair on Stanford, and one on Cal. The Paulson twins for Stanford and the Gray twins for Cal. How often do you see that? Getting ready for Ike to send in. And a steal. That's Courtney Boone into the penalty area. It's loose. Gray was trying to get to it and knocked out of there by Angie. Great job by Angie. It was starting to get dangerous for Stanford. I remember for Stanford, with a little less than 24 minutes to go in this match, they have to make sure they don't give up two goals. If they give up one, they're still going to win the Pac-12 outright, although that would snap their shutout streak. But the only way they don't win the Pac-12 outright is by losing and ending up in a tie and a share of the Pac-12 title. So they have that no matter what, the share of the title, but they want to get the outright title. They need a tie or a win, at least a tie, to beat out UCLA, who already lost to USC earlier today here on Pac-12 Network. Here's Lima. Von flash of the touch going back to Mateer. Accelerating on Angie. Can she get by her? Feeds Gifford on the far side. Gifford getting by Paulson in the corner. Into the middle and saving the day is Campbell. An initial juggle right there made it a little dangerous. Sometimes good things happen when you send it towards the goal. And you can see that it was Gray. Anissa Gray, number 17, was trying to get involved. But Campbell was there. There's Gray trying to get to it for Cal. Bon Flasha into the middle. Lima comes back out. Roy Bon Flasha again. The cross. Gray trying to get to it. Punched out of there by Campbell. She's done it for Stanford in a lot of different ways this season, and you're seeing it on display today. Collins for Cal. But the Cardinal get it back in Doms at midfield. The Antini now for Stanford. Paulson back to Leontini. Mateo is on Leontini, and she'll send a cross. Rubenstein makes the move. Rubenstein in the middle, nobody there. Didn't have any help. Now Gifford. And that one skips along the near sideline. Samantha Williams back in. She has the only goal of the match in the 60th minute as Kossmeyer checks out. Seventh goal of the season for Williams earlier. Now 13 career goals for her. It'll be Rubenstein throwing it in for Stanford. Well, they will be pretty content here in the last 20 minutes. 20 and a half minutes right now to play really good defense and then see if they get some opportunities. But they're going to lay back a lot, you would think. Here's Roy. 
And trying to find the speedy Lima, but too far. It is knocked out by Stanford, so we're going to have a corner kick here for Cal. And Roy will set it up. He's got Lima and Gray in front of the goal. Surrounded by red jerseys. That's a low one. Whiffed on there. Comes back out for Roy. Pops one into the penalty area. Mateer couldn't get anything going from deep, so dishes it off. Here's Gifford. Bumped by Doms. And that is out, so it'll be a throw in here for Cal. Boone to throw it in. Von Flasha made a charge, couldn't get to it. Briggs trying to get to it and can't. Comes all the way out to Collins. Now Gifford. Sends towards the penalty area. Some bears are there. Gray, it's loose. Von Flasha almost had a chance at it. It's a scrum. There's some bumping. Bodies flying. And Stanford survives that. And that's where you really have to be tough as defensive players. That ball is loose, and there's a lot of pushing. Stanford came out of it unscathed. The shutout streak continues for the Cardinal. Anna Cooper, who came in late in the game on Sunday, comes in late in this one again for Cal. She had a quick touch there. There's Roy, breaking free a little bit. That's blocked. Comes out for Bon Flasha. Sent towards the penalty area. Lima couldn't get to it. Bon Flasha couldn't control it. Substitution number 17, Amy Sayer replaces. Amy Sayer comes in for Stanford, and we see Fontana back in for Cal. It's the first time we're seeing Sayer for Stanford, the junior from Sydney, Australia. One of my favorite places. They know how to put on an Olympics. Back in 2000. Here come the Bears, trying to get something going here, down one nothing. And that shot by Cooper is blocked. It'll be a corner kick here for the Bears. There's Hannah Cooper, who has one goal this year. Came back from injury. The redshirt sophomore from Irvine, getting some late playing time, just like she did Sunday against Utah. Now Roy to set up the corner kick. Into the scrum. It's loose for Gray, and they score! Cal scores off the loose ball. They tie it up in the 74th minute. Lots of bodies in there. Boone was the one who touched it. And then the goal. Not sure who got that. And it looks like it was Lima. I think it was Lima who slid in to get the goal. In the 74th minute, that's a California goal. It is Lima. So that's the fourth goal of the season for Carly, the sophomore. And a big one to tie the match. So now we have a new ball game here. That's what I talked about 
right at the beginning of our broadcast that Lima can score in different ways with her speed. That time she scored in a scrum. And it was Boone who helped set that up, a defender. So Cal has new life. And that is the first goal scored against Stanford in a long time. First goal scored against them since October the 9th. So nearly a full month ago. That was against Washington State on an own goal. So they had gone around 570 minutes around that amount of time without giving up a goal. And they do here. I mean, that's from five shutouts in a row, not giving up the goal since October the 9th. Shutting out UCLA, Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, Colorado, but not Cal today. We have a player shaken up. I think that's Bonflasha on that collision. A K, by the way, back in the game after she was hurt earlier. And Bonflasha is still trying to shake that one off. So Noel Bonflasha having troubles getting up after that collision. We've seen a few of these in this second half, just players flipping up in the air. Time, I believe that was Leontini. Leontini, who was flying in the air over Bonflasha. Let's take a look at the goal that Cal scored after we see that. That was the collision. This is the goal. So it was Boone, you could see off the corner kick, and that set piece just setting it up so that somebody could get to it. And eventually it was Lima scoring the goal. Boone touching there, Lima sliding in to get the goal. Coach McGuire huddling his team up as they attend to Bonflasha. Joe Castellano with you. It's great to have you with us here on Pac-12 Network. Earlier today, it was USC shutting out UCLA 2-0. That means that Stanford needs a tie. Or, of course, if they win, they get the outright Pac-12 championship. If they lose, they end up with a share of the title with UCLA. Stanford has won seven straight games here in Berkeley. They had the one nothing lead, scoring in the 60th minute. Williams with the goal, her seventh. But Lima tying it in the 74th minute. Just moments ago. Now free kick here. Boone sending into the penalty area. Knocked out of there by the Cardinal. And they will come out of it. Here comes Williams again, showing off the speed. Williams, two on three. Comes across and couldn't get it to Sayer. Recently checked in for Stanford. Well, this one going out off Cal, so it'll be a throw in for the Cardinal. Harman in. Riley Harmon checking in for Cal. She comes in for the first time today. California goal was scored by number Carly Lima. Now Stanford trying to answer that tying goal by Cal. Into the penalty area, knocked out of there.
It was Grubel who sent that into the middle. Battle on the near side, and it'll be a throw in for Stanford and Rubenstein. Here comes Doms, zigzagging. Grubel makes her move. The cross. It's bounced around and knocked out. A couple times here that Stanford got it into the penalty area, but just couldn't get a good shot off. And both times it's Grubel who has tried to set it up. Tried to get to Sayer there. Sayer the junior who has four goals this year. Anderson sends it away. Lima, the speed. Can she get to it? She does. Towards the goal, but it's just a roller that Campbell gobbles up. Lima with a track star's speed. Not a great scoring opportunity as it turned out, though. Here's Sayer. They try to get it over to Grubel. Now Fontana for Cal. Trying to beat that defender, Rubenstein. But Rubenstein wins that battle. Now Doms over to Grubel. Here comes Grubel for Stanford. He's got some room with Sayer. Little stutter step. Gets it to stay, Sayer. Now Williams, who has the goal earlier, shoots, and it's wide. California substitution, number 29, Skyler Briggs. Skyler Briggs back in the match for Cal. It's the chance here. It's a good setup there for Williams, but the shot was off the mark. Looking for her second goal of the game. 11 minutes to go in this match, all tied at one. Remember, there's no overtime anymore in college soccer. Throw in here for the Cardinal. Coach Ratcliffe was stressing before this match that it's not just about winning the Pac-12 title outright, although that is huge and something that uh, you definitely treasure, but it's about that rivalry with Cal. And here comes Williams. Williams for Stanford. You look for those bragging rights here in the Bay Area. Rubenstein. Doms. Stanford controlling here. They work the far side of the field. In the shadows, Williams going up against McTayer. Williams, nice move. Creates some room. Looking for Grubel. The shot. Oh, it goes off the hands of Anderson. Great opportunity right there for Grubel. And this was all the doing of Williams. I mean, look at that. He's setting her up. And then the left-footed shot off the fingertips of Angelina Anderson. If she did, I think she got a piece of that, but maybe not. And she was there in the way of it. Yeah, she didn't get a piece of it because they... It was a goal kick. And here we go again with Ike.
They send it back for Campbell. Mateo battling for it for Cal. Can't control, but Roy has it now. And the giveaway. Scruble took it. Stanford breaks out. Sayer with a catch. Taken away by Boone. Courtney Boone, nice play. Trying to get it going the other way. She had the assist on the goal. And that's going to be a corner kick. Golden Bears substitution, number 39, Noel Bond Fascia. Bond Fascia comes Jason into the game again Harman. for Cal, for Harmon. Roy on the corner kick. It was on a set piece that Cal scored earlier. It's bounced around again, but it's knocked out of there by Stanford. You know, they didn't actually credit an assist for Boone earlier. Even though she did help out on that goal. Okay, with some fancy moves. She went out earlier, hurt, but came back. Knocks it all the way across. Briggs now. Loses that battle with Rubenstein. There'll be a throw in for Cal. Six and a half remaining in this 1 1 tie. Got Stanford, a team that's won nine in a row. Here's Lima, and a shot too high. Cal, they've been unbeaten their last four. 11, Catherine Paulson. Lima, who scored her fifth goal earlier, and she's had other chances. Comes all the way back. Grubel trying to track it down, but Anderson is there. Mateer, midfield, big strides. It's away from the defense. Von Flasha working it. Here's Gifford. Back for Mateer. Looks at the whole field. Now works it over to Briggs. And Fontana double teamed. Look at the defense for Stanford. Just an amazing job. Ruben Stein was able to knock that away. Just great positioning by the senior Ruben Stein. Just a difference maker defensively for Stanford. They have several defenders that are just having an awesome season. This will be a corner kick for Cal. The Cal will set it up. They've done a good job of bunching players in the middle and having a loose ball where maybe you get a chance to knock one in. And that one's over the goal. Substitution for the Cardinal, 28, Logan Smith. She replaces Abby Grubel. Logan Smith comes in. I believe that's the first time we're seeing her coming in for Grubel who gets a breather. That might be more for defensive purposes here in the final four minutes. The freshman is in there, Logan Smith. 
It is definitely for defensive purposes to put another, and she is another defender, so that is the reason. Playing a bit for the tie here. And again, a tie for Stanford. They still win the Pac-12 outright. That was Logan Smith right there trying to get to it. Rubenstein overplayed it. Lima trying to pass, but didn't connect with her teammate. Throw in here for Cal. A little sense of urgency here for the Bears trying to win at home. Briggs. Bon Flasha can't get it. Here comes Doms. Doms with some room. And now slows it up. Williams, the intended receiver there, but that's intercepted. And here come the Golden Bears. Keely Roy looking for Lima here. Oh, they both go tumbling down. Lima is shaken up, and so is the Stanford player. Man, that was a hard collision. Yeah, that was a tough one with Wesley, and she's had a couple of moments where she's gone down to the ground hard. It's been kind of a long day for her in that regard. She's okay, though. Lima right now is not okay. They're checking on Carly Lima. We have seen several players go down to the ground in a very hard way. Stretching out Lima right there. And that's the last player you want to lose, not only for the last two and a half minutes of this match, but going forward. With all the speed and excitement that she provides, you want to have her on the field at all times for the NCAA tournament, which starts up next Sunday. Talking it over with the trainer. And it's good that she got up, but she is limping off. So Lima's going to have to leave the match. And here's what happened. Lima was flying down the field, and Wesley just got right in front of her. So the only goal scorer today for the Golden Bears and the Player who provides so much speed is out. And that really hurts, as I said, not just for this match, but going forward. You have to hope she's okay. Cooper is in for Lima. Goes out on the far side. Throw in by Gifford. Von Flasha. Mateer. Bears trying to make something happen here. Here comes Briggs up the left side. Back for Mateer. Gets a good look at the field. Sends it over to the far side. They work it to Ake. Ake with some nifty moves and shoots and it's blocked. That'll be another corner kick for Cal. Had quite a few of those in the second half. It's been a team effort for Stanford defensively blocking a lot of those shots. Roy will send in with a minute 15 to go in the match. Campbell punches it out. It comes to Briggs, and it goes over the goal. Briggs didn't have a great chance at that one because it was up high when she took that shot. Briggs there was about waist level. Tough to get a good one off there that's going to be low enough to score. 45 seconds to go in the match. 
Campbell sends down on the far side, and it goes out. It'll be a throw in for Cal. Gifford trying to get it in quickly. Gets to Mateer. Over to Bonflasha. Under 30 seconds to go in the match. Bears trying to get one more chance here at a scoring opportunity. 15 seconds. And that one taken away, but Ten. Briggs keeps it alive. Eight. Whistle. Seven. Time running down. Yellow card with four seconds remaining. Yellow card against Stanford. So you get one more try here on a free kick. And it'll be Roy. Possibly, let's see. You got Roy and Boone together. Might be a quick touch here and then a shot. That's all you have time for. Or a run at the goal here if you can poke one into the middle. See what they decide. And actually that was a cat standing there. It's going to be Keeley Roy. Four. Here comes everybody, and Campbell jumps out and grabs it, and that'll do it. Stanford and Cal play to a tie. The Cardinals celebrate the outright Pac-12 championship. Tenth time they've done it under Coach Radcliffe. First time since 2019. 10th time they've done it in the last 14 seasons as the coaches embrace. And the Cardinal finished the regular season 16-2-2. They do snap a nine-game winning streak, and their shutout streak is snapped at five games in a row. But they get the results. And with UCLA losing, they win the Pac-12. Both goals in the second half. Williams, her seventh of the season, made a great move, showed off terrific speed to get by Briggs, and eventually getting the goal with a little help. Looked like I thought it went off her teammate, but it was credited to Williams, her seventh. Another look here at Williams. 13th career goal. And this came in the 60th minute. It was too much speed for Briggs right there. And then once Anderson committed to her left side, that goal went the other way. Cal eventually tying it in the 74th minute. Lima her fifth. And that's how we end up tied. 15th Pac-12 championship for Stanford, the most in the conference. Cal ends up the regular season 10, 4, and 6. And they have been unbeaten in their last five. Great job by our entire crew, led by Mike Fitz, the youngster. <laughs> we like to say that. For now, I'm Joe Castellano saying so long from Berkeley, a 1-1 tie. Have a great night, everybody.